Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then my name is Katie. I'm a full-time artist. And in today's video, I'm showing something a little bit different to usual because it will be a junk journaling video. So if you've been around for a while, you'll know that I really enjoy junk journaling. And sadly, it's a hobby of mine that I don't get to do as often as I'd like. But twice a year, there is a fantastic journaling challenge called Junk Journal January and Junk Journal July hosted by Meg Journals. And it's a really, really great way for me to get back into this hobby and really make time for it. I also create all of the graphics for these community challenges that are hosted by Meg. And it's a month long creative challenge with 31 prompts. So I will pop the prompt list on the screen now if you wanted to take part. If you haven't junk journaled before, then it's a really great place to start with some ideas and you don't have to do all of them. It's very relaxed and Meg often encourages you to just pick and choose depending on what you're feeling. So as part of this challenge, there's a full playlist with a different creator every day taking part and creating a video using their prompt. So I will leave a link in the description to the playlist and up in the cards if you'd like to see everybody else's amazing creations and get inspiration for yourself. So as I said, mine is geometric and you can see here, I'm just cutting out a little stencil. I wanted to do a chevron and I'm just using a scrap piece of card to create this little arrow shape. I was planning on doing more than one, but I realized I can just use this one and just repeat it a few times. I'm using some white gouache, but you can also use white acrylic, and I'm just using a foam brush to stamp this on my page. I'm putting this down onto brown paper just so that it really stands out, but you can put it onto the blank background if you're using darker colors, just so that it shows up. The prompt geometric is quite different for me, so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to tackle it. But I really loved this idea and I did have fun playing around with the pattern. I started with this configuration at the top and then I changed it a little bit down the bottom of the page because I wanted to see how it interlinked. I kind of didn't do it as I wanted it first time, but it didn't matter. My junk journal is generally a place for play and just having fun. So the eagle-eyed viewers of you might recognize this journal because I have created in it before for the past couple of years, Junk Journal January and Junk Journal July challenges. And it was when I was watching a video from Meg who was saying about how it doesn't matter if you don't do all the prompts and I hadn't filled this journal. So I started with 2022, then 2023. Obviously now we're in 2024 and I've got bits and pieces from the different past challenges. I always come in with great intentions to do the 31 days and I just don't have the time. So I decided to follow Meg's advice and just go with it, to just go with it this year and see what I create. I've been jumping in and out on the prompts and I'm just trying to go with it with low pressure. So I'm gonna do a flip through at the end of this video if you want to see how the full journal has been looking. So like I said, it does have some prompts in from this year as well as last year's and the year before's. But that's okay, I really do want this to be low pressure. And like I said, I absolutely love junk journaling. It's a hobby of mine that I don't do as often as I'd like because I prioritize my other creative hobbies, but it's a really mindful one for me and it gets me away from my computer. It really helps me to switch off from thinking about my business and work stuff and just play with paper. So I really hope you enjoy watching this one come to life. As you can see there, I've done the geometric pattern on the right using my gouache and I did smudge it a little bit. I want things to be quite rough and ready. And you're going to see me try lots of different things on this spread. As with my sketchbooks, I don't have a plan. I just go with it and see what works and what feels right to me. And I try not to overthink it. If I like something, I'll glue it down because I do find that there are so many options and I have so many different bits of paper and ephemera that it can be a little bit daunting. So if I like it, I'll just stick it down because I have plenty of stuff and I don't need to worry too much. So I really try to switch off the perfectionism as well. So I've popped down my larger elements. I try to start with a background of larger pieces just to help me build up the page from there. So you can see behind I've got an old newspaper page, um, a little page of flowers, and then I'm putting in this postcard from the Nostalgia postcard set. And I'm covering the other side just with this scrap of fabric. I really like that pop of mustard yellow and it is hidden underneath that fold out bit. So I've just attached the postcard with a pop of color because I wanted it to be a little bit brighter a lot of the pages in this book so far are very neutral with lots of brown tones, so I did want to try and add that in. 
I also found this little scrap which is from an envelope so sometimes the inside of security envelopes come with these geometric patterns so I thought that tied in really well with the prompt of day 29 and it was a little bit in your face so I did tone it down a little bit with that white paint again with my foam brush so it kind of links the pages in together. This is my box of scraps. I've had a really good sort out so it feels a little bit more manageable and all of my smaller scraps go into this little basket. So I'm just having a look through and looking for different elements. I really wanted to fill the space on the left hand side of that brown paper section on the right hand page but I was struggling to try and find a shape that worked so I do come in and out with different elements because it really is just trial and error. I haven't cut any of that out so you can really see my indecision but when I find something that I think does work then I'll add it straight in. So again I'm adding on some pattern there. Sometimes it's a little bit hazy what's the difference between geometric and pattern for me but generally I feel like geometric is more like angular shapes and fitting together which is why I decided to choose chevrons but I also was tempted to do triangles but I feel like you can really take these prompts and make them work for you. I know Meg really encourages the creativity and like taking the prompts and really putting your own spin on it so whatever feels right for you is definitely the way to go but hopefully this is a good starting point and an idea for you if you aren't sure how to tackle this prompt and want to join me in creating a little stencil just to create the geometric pattern. So again I'm adding on some more washi tape just to pull in the colour from the other side. I really like my spreads to look quite cohesive. I've added on a black and white sticker down at the bottom of a line drawing of a flower which I really liked and I finally found something to fill that gap which is just a little stamp sticker and then a real stamp and I just really liked how they looked layered and it did fill that gap really nicely for me so I feel like that was a really good way to balance the thread. The black line stick at the bottom also links in with the black numbers I've used for the 29 which I have used in a few prompts already from this challenge so it ties that in together and then I also stamped that little today's notes bit which is a circle and it just balances out with the geometric shapes I think. So I really love adding hidden elements so I'm adding in this little butterfly card into a vellum envelope and I've glued that so it's kind of peeking out from when you fold down the postcard which I really like. And now I'm creating a little collage cluster just over the fabric just to add on some more interest. I added in that other chevron so that's actually a photo corner but I really love how it kind of links in with the geometric prompt and again it ties together the two pages but it's a very subtle nod to it. So I just play around with the layout but I think this one turned out really nice and it was really fun to just look for different patterns and add them into this page. So there is quite a lot of different patterns and geometric shapes in here and I was really pleased with how this spread turned out. So I am just doing some close-ups of how the spread turned out so you can see it in closer detail and see all the different elements. And I also want to show you a quick flip through of how the whole journal is looking because a lot of this I have done off camera like I said I used to do a lot of journaling videos in the past and I don't really do that anymore but it's still something I really enjoy doing. I just generally don't do it on camera anymore when I do make time for it. So let's show you the rest of the journal. And you can see here I did take off the numbers so originally this was dated. Last year I added on the 2023 underneath some wooden letter stickers where I'd put on 2022. But like I said I decided to take the dates off this and just stop adding the year on every year and just have it a free for all journal that I will work on and pull out whenever I fancy junk journaling. So you might recognise a few of these threads because I will have done some of them on the channel. Again they will be in my playlist but I just really love coming in here and just creating without any pressure. I generally use a lot of ephemera that I've cut from magazines, some collage, lots of packaging so there's a lot of brown paper, postcards and like little flyers or business cards and then I pair that with washi tapes and stickers and little labels and just try to fill the page to however feels right for me at the time. I haven't gone back and added any journaling, I generally prefer to just create and I've worked out that that's how I like to fill my journals of just playing with paper so there's definitely a lot less writing here than there used to be. I tend to journal in my daily journal which is a Hobonichi so I fill my words in there and then this is just like paper and collage and having fun. 
Here are some from this year's junk journal January prompts. So we've got resolutions there on the left and we've got tuck spot on the right. Really love that one. This one is unfilled as of yet, but I'm going to keep coming back to this journal and keep going. So here's 29, which is geometric. And I'm also going to show you the rest of the pages. So there's still plenty to fill in here. As you can see, they are blank and some of them have got elements of collage on that I've stuck in already and also some pages where I've made this journal myself. I have got a video on my channel where I showed how I made this journal and it's really special to me so I really hope you've enjoyed seeing this one come to life. I hope it's given you some ideas for geometric and I really hope you've been enjoying the junk journal January challenge so far. I definitely recommend checking out the playlist down below if you want to see more videos and get some inspiration for your journals. But thank you for watching, I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next Sunday with a new YouTube video. See you later!